What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about Big O Notation. And Big O Notation kind of is a scary, <laughs> it sounds a little scary. It sounds a little academic. It sounds a little, you know, like what possibly could this word be? And really it means how efficient is your code? And even in a certain sense, how fast is your code? How well does your code run? And you may be thinking to yourself, well, how do we actually measure how uh, efficient a you know piece of code is? And we will get into that. But in this video, I'm gonna teach you the hack. Like I'm not gonna teach you all you know, the mathematical models to determine this thing. Like, I'm just gonna teach you to look at a function. I'm gonna teach you how to look at an algorithm and you can just immediately off the top of your head say, oh, that's that's linear. Oh, that's, you know, quadratic. Oh, that's a good, oh, that's a bad algorithm. I'm just gonna teach you how to just look at it. You don't need to know anything else. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to go on Google, maybe not right now, but you need to become incredibly familiar with this graph like this graph is going to be um, absolutely pivotal in your understanding and there's even little cheat sheets for big o I, you don't need to know uh that quite just yet but i'm going to teach you the way to you know the hack to reading this chart and that is you want to know this you want to know this and you want to know this if you write those down o1 o n and o n squared that's going to be like 99 percent or maybe 90 percent of the algorithms that you're ever going to see and that's what interviewers are going to kind of be judging you off of and you need to know the slang like you need to know how to convey to the interviewer that you understand what these three are you could learn these later like you we don't need to worry about these right now we don't need to worry about this right now we don't need to worry about this one but definitely remember these ones and you may also notice that there's horrible there's bad there's fair there's good and there's excellent and you guessed it good excellent means that your code runs very fast horrible means don't you know, don't ever go here. And you're going to you're gonna be here, you know, when you first start writing a lot of algorithms, but you want to get your algorithms down here in the green and you want them to be O N O one or N squared. So now I'm going to kind of just go through each one of these and explain to you exactly what, you know, these look like and what these three things mean. And if you could, if you have a pencil and piece of paper, down you know with you i would just write these down and just start following along with me so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to stop drawing and we're going to talk about o1 constant and if we go back to our graph o1 is the greenest of the green he's like the he or she's like the you know the creme de la creme it's like the cadillac of algorithm efficiencies if your code's running at o1 you are a rock star you have hacked the system and Congratulations, you are now working at Google. Not really, I'm just kidding. But constant O1 is slang for O1, and you need to know the slang. Like, you need to know, you know, you need to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to be a real estate agent, you need to know, you know, NOI, cap rate. You know, you need to be in the know, and you need to know you don't want to go into an interview. You could say O1, but the interviewer is probably going to say, is this constant? And constant means O1. And like I said, like that's the Cadillac. That's what you want. That's like the that's like the princess at the top of the castle. That's like the girl that everybody's trying to get. And the way that you can see a constant algorithm is very simple. It's assignment. Like you literally go in and you assign a variable to a zero. It's declaration, so a declaration is pretty much an assignment, but it's not actually assigning anything into it. So right here, you're actually assigning it. It's arithmetic, it's comparison, it's accessing an array, and it's calling a function. And if you want to, this will give you kind of like a heads up of like what we're actually working on is, so you don't even know what a linked list is, but if you just look at this function right here what do you think that is or what do you like 
are we doing are we just we're just assigning things and there's nothing else in here we're just we're literally just assigning data this is o1 this is an o1 algorithm so n1 this is constant if the interviewer says you know what time complexity or what's the time complexity of this or what's the complexity of this algorithm sometimes it's referred to as a time complexity you could confidently look at this and just see that there's assignments going on and you would say this is constant time complexity this is like i said this is the cadillac this is what everybody wants if you're trying to get an algorithm you're trying to get an algorithm to constant if you can it's not always possible but if you can get something constant time complexity you're doing good <laughs> and they're going to ask you that they're going to if you do a higher you know complexity algorithm if you do a quadratic which we'll talk about here in a second if you do like a maybe like the honda civic of algorithms you make one it's not bad but it's not good what they're going to say is how can you make this the cadillac how can you make this the princess at the top of the castle how can you make this like you know even better and if you can make your code look like this and it's just assigning and you're not looping through anything and you're not doing any other type of operation you've got it in uh, constant time complexity so let's move up the chain let's talk about the i call it the honda civic it's not bad it's not like the worst and you drive a honda civic there's nothing wrong with it but it's not the cadillac it's not you know what it's not what everybody wants and that is going to be o n and the way that you can spot an o n is very simple and there could be you know different circumstances for this but the way that you spot an o n is it's a for loop you know, you can go watch another video and they're going to give you all these, you know, crazy things. But really, at the end of the day, O-N, oftentimes linear. Remember, you need to know your slang. You need to know, like, the actual words that are, you know, associated with these. And, you know, you got to know how to be cool. It's linear. And the way that you can tell it's linear is it's it's got a for loop in it. It's got a while loop. It's doing some type of iteration. Like, whether you're, you know, doing a while loop or whether you're doing a for loop, you're stepping through code and something is executing and you're having to do operations over and over again. And let's go back to our graph. So O1 time complexity is just flat. It's just literally just like a flat, like, you know, whatever. It's It never goes up. It never goes down. It's constant. And that's why the reason that they call it constant. But if you notice ON is it's constantly, it's at a slope. And if you're familiar with algebra, you'll know that, you know, these are indicative of algebraic notations, but you don't really need to know that. What you need to know is this one is always going to be one, but n is indicative of any number. And algebra, as the number goes up, if you put this n into, or if you did n in like an algebra uh, calculator, and if you took, you know, college algebra, if, but if you just took high school algebra, you could probably still understand this. I'd, I went to business school, so I have a knowledge of just, you know, pretty pretty crappy knowledge of algebra, and even I know what it is. Oh, it, they call it n because the more you put into it, the higher that it goes up. So if you ran with constant if you put a thousand constants and you try to run like a thousand constants through this, it's always going to be the same. But if you put try to put like a, an array of a thousand in there, like say like if this total or if this right here, this 10 was like a million, it would go up linearly. Like the bigger the array or the amount that you put into it, the more that it's going to go up. And that's the reason that they call it linear or the reason why the line on the graph is like this is because once again, and I'm kind of sounding like a broken record here is you put an array of a thousand into a constant, it's going to be a constant. You put an array of a million into linear, it's going to go up. It's going to, you know, the time complexity, the time it takes for this, ex this algorithm to execute is going to go up and it's just a for loop. It's just a while loop. Um, also, just like algebra, what you do is you take the bigger number. So here, our total is going to be a one. It's constant. We have other constant in here, but because we have this while loop in here, even you don't add up all of them. There's no adding up 
complexity. You take the biggest complexity and that's it. And you X out the ones just like you do in algebra and you take the bigger number. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to talk about, this is like the jalopy. This is the, this is the bad car. This is the moped of algorithms. If your algorithm is O n squared, and let me just go back and I'll show you the O n squared. You're, you do this, you, you go to a Microsoft or a Google interview and you do a, they will not be mad at you for having a uh, algorithm with quadratic time complexity, but immediately expect them if you have a quadratic time complexity algorithm right after that, they're going to say, how are you going to make this better? Because this is quadratic and you can't, you know, we can't be having quadratic around here. And that's like I said, that's like the moped that's the that's the one that you don't want. If your algorithm is quadratic, you're you. I don't think you're gonna fail the interview, but you're gonna you know not be really wowing people. And the way that you can see a quadratic algorithm, it's very simple. It's a nested for loop. That's like literally all it is. You don't need to know any type of fancy algorithm, and you don't need to know any type of fancy. I, you know, mathematical model to know any of this stuff. Like a quadratic algorithm is a nested for loop. And the reason why you're going to probably default to quadratic algorithms when you are first starting this journey into learning this is because it's just instinctual. It's like the easiest thing to grab onto. And the reason that it's quadratic is because number one, you're iterating through a for loop already and then you have to iterate through the iteration and let me just kind of show you like what this looks like in an actual uh like program so here is i've got an example here so right here is linear and you don't have to actually type any of this out uh, this is this is linear right here but this is our fine squirtle algorithm and we're actually, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show this to you guys. And I'm just kind of streaming this as I go. So this is our find Squirtle algorithm. This only has a for loop and it's finding the Squirtle. So if you pass in an array here, like if we passed in this string and we br bring this up here, this will be our example what it's going to do is it's going to for loop through these. It's going to go boom, boom. For each iteration, it's going to go boom, boom. But let's say we have a quadratic algorithm. And I'll show you the reason why it's, it's actually quadratic. Let's go down here. For this quadratic algorithm, and it's also some kind of, whenever you have a quadratic algorithm, I don't know why my... My YouTube music just popped up in front of, on my other screen. What's going to happen is, and this is the reason that they call it a brute force, is that for the first for loop, you're going to go through it. You're going to go boom, boom, boom. And then inside this for loop, you're going to go through each letter. That's why for loops, with nested for loops are quadratic. And that's the reason why a lot of times people use nested for loops. And that's the first thing that they reach for is because... A lot of times people get tripped up and they get confused and they don't know how to actually have a, you know, constant or a linear function when they just the, instinctually, they just want to reach for that quadratic algorithm because they know they have to go in here and iterate, iterate through each letter. And that's the reason why, you know, you go to a Microsoft interview and they're going to be like, well, how are you going to make this better? So that is... 90% of it right there and log in you're gonna see log in and I'll just kind of go through the Maybe the rest of the algorithm is going to be things like binary search tree or binary search and trees um, And we'll talk about more of those later, but you know, let's not get confused and then n log in is going to be Relatively exotic algorithms like quick sort merge sort shell sort and cube sort and That is going to be pretty much it and that is going to be your introduction to big O notation and I hope that was very simple and helped you get the picture easily. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching.